Michael Jackson, the king of pop. Do I need to give a background? He is one of the most influential artists of all time. No one will ever be like he was. From the hundreds of millions of albums sold to fans passing out at just the sight of him, Michael Jackson achieved a lot in his lifetime. With what he achieved from his own personal music, this would eventually lead him to buying catalogs of other artists, creating a portfolio around music catalogs, and that's what we're here to talk about today. In this video, I will be covering the music catalog he bought, what his estate still owns, and the current state of Michael's own catalog. Now, where I want to start this is before Michael Jackson ever bought a music catalog, it was while he was still building up his own. When Michael was working on his 1982 classic, Thriller, he would work alongside the legendary Beatle, Paul McCartney for a few tracks. While collaborating, this is where Paul McCartney would inform him about the lucrative business that was buying publishing rights for music catalogs. Paul did have experience in this field, not from investing in other music catalogs just yet, but trying to manage his own. Himself and other legendary Beatle, John Lennon, were originally the owners of the Beatles publishing rights, where they could collect on royalties from their massive hits. However, that would change in 1969 when their royalties would be sold through poor management decisions to British Outfit Associated Television, also known as ATV. This would be an issue that Paul McCartney would feel for decades as of course he wanted to own his music and make money off the legendary catalog. Once his own catalog was out of his hands, Paul McCartney would start buying other artists catalogs to build his own portfolio leading to the advice he would give Michael Jackson in 1982. This advice that Paul gave Michael would eventually come back to bite him. In 1985, the Beatles catalog would be back up for sale, and this time there was a lot of eyes as the value was known by everyone. In that year, Associated Television was up for sale for the rights of over 4,000 songs, of which 251 were from the Beatles. That is a great package as it includes a historical historical catalog alongside thousands of songs to deepen it further. So of course, with this opportunity to buy back their music, Paul McCartney and John Lennon's wife were set to bid. They weren't the only ones trying to get a piece of this deal, there were a lot of heavy hitters coming with millions of dollars to spend. One of those heavy hitters was Michael Jackson, the person Paul gave advice to just a few years ago about buying music catalogs. Maybe if he never shared game like that, what happened next wouldn't have come true. Michael Jackson would outbid Paul McCartney and John Lennon's wife for the Beatles catalog in all of ATV for a total of $47.5 million. I have talked a lot about investment firms buying up artist publishing catalogs. I even was interviewed on this topic by OK Player as we are seeing a rising trend of major artists selling their catalogs over the past two years for all time high valuations. This made me think, if this deal was done today, how much would the value be? 47.5 million in 1985 is valued at 131 million today, which falls in line with a lot of the deals we are seeing of artists selling their catalogs. However, that's with catalogs like Justin Timberlake, Dr. Dre, Justin Bieber, and others, so I do believe it would be different today because the Beatles catalog is looked at even more legendary to own than in 1985. My guess is that number would be a lot higher. I'm talking billions. In 1985, 47.5 million or 131 million today is what Michael Jackson bought ATV, including the Beatles catalog for, which was a great purchase. So how did Paul McCartney feel about this? Because he was the one to give Michael the advice to buy music catalogs. You guessed it, he was not happy saying to be someone's friend and then buy the rug they're standing on. I mean, understandably upset, However, John Lennon's wife had a different view as she was happy that it belonged to Michael and not some corporation. This would cause the two legendary artists to drift apart. So what happened next? Does Michael Jackson's estate still own the Beatles catalog? 10 years after purchasing ATV, which included the Beatles catalog, Michael Jackson would sell 50% of his ownership in the catalog to Sony for $95 million. This deal with Sony would create the Sony ATV Publishing Company, 
now just known as Sony Music Publishing. What a big deal though, because within 10 years, Michael Jackson made millions from owning the large ATV catalog, then sold just 50% of it for double what he bought it for. By 1995, Michael Jackson made a $47.5 million profit from selling 50% of ATV, keeping the other 50% to earn on for the rest of his life. That's exactly what he did as he owned half of the ATV catalog even after his passing for years, eventually selling the rest of it to Sony for $750 million. A massive payout to end the run of ownership in the Beatles catalog and thousands of other songs. It is estimated that the Beatles catalog alone now is worth over a billion dollars and you can see a hint of that in the sale that went down in 2016. Not even thinking about collecting royalties on the songs owned, just by the two sales that took place selling 50% then the rest, Michael Jackson and his estate made over $797 million. Paul McCartney should have taken Michael Jackson seriously in the 80s when he joked about buying the Beatles catalog because just a few years later, he would do so, making hundreds of millions after it. The next story of Michael Jackson buying music catalogs is another one you may be familiar with as it is a popular story. This is how Michael got revenge on Eminem by buying his music catalog. In 2004, Eminem already has risen to great success at this point, reaching a wider audience with his music. During this time, Eminem would release his studio album Encore that had the song Just Lose It as a lead single. That one track would change Eminem's life forever. In Just Lose It, there were several disses towards Michael Jackson that he would be offended by. Eminem would quickly apologize but it was already too late with the song out. Once again, playing the long game, Michael Jackson would wait three years until he had the opportunity to strike back. In 2007, Michael Jackson and his company Sony ATV, which he still had that 50% ownership in, would buy publishing company Famous Music for $370 million. In this deal, Sony ATV would now have ownership of the large catalog of soundtracks produced for popular movies slash TV shows like Top Gun, Footloose, and more, but also owned catalogs of a few music artists, including Eminem. This meant that Michael Jackson now owned the song that dissed him, and also owned every song released by Eminem at this point. You have to remember that this is 2007, Eminem has broken and is breaking records at the time, so owning his catalog during this meant that Michael Jackson and Sony were cashing in on royalties for years to come. This would continue even after Michael's passing in 2009 and Eminem's music catalog would eventually be returned to him in 2016. I guess the moral of this story is to be careful who you diss, especially if they have the money to buy your life's work. As for other music catalogs that Michael Jackson owned, we have to look into the overall publishing companies that ran them. When he bought the Beatles catalog by purchasing ATV, Michael gained ownership of 4,000 songs. Once he became co-owner in Sony ATV, that would set him up even more. By owning Sony ATV, Michael Jackson would gain new catalogs over the years from thousands of artists. This includes Taylor Swift, Lady Gaga, Whitney Houston, and a lot more. Owning such a large publishing company with the reach that Sony had put millions in Michael Jackson's pockets. When Michael bought Famous Music in 2007, he wasn't just buying Eminem's catalog. He also bought both Akon and Shakira's catalog with a few others. Michael Jackson also has his own publishing company for his own music through MyJack Music. I can't confirm exactly what songs he owns, but Michael's ex-wife Lisa Presley says that Michael owns a few Elvis songs through MyJack. He also owns select songs by Ray Charles. By having these different outlets through Sony ATV, Famous Music, or MyJack, Michael Jackson was able to acquire thousands of catalogs that would deepen his portfolio 
making millions. This leads me to the big questions, what is Michael Jackson's catalog valued at now and does he still own it? We know that the estate sold off the other catalogs that he has owned over the years for almost a billion already, but that has not touched his own music. After his passing, Michael's music catalog remained at his publishing company, MyJack Music. MyJack has been working closely with Sony in order to help manage the legendary catalog through an administration deal. However, things may be changing soon. In 2022 and 2023, I covered many artists who were selling their music catalogs to investment firms or publishing companies for all-time high valuations. This includes Future for $70 million, Dr. Dre for $200 million, Bruce Springsteen for $500 million, and a lot more. This is a trend that is rapidly increasing, and you can learn more about it in my Why Investment Firms Are Buying Music Catalogs video that will be linked in the description. This trend is not limiting to artists, and you can bet that Michael Jackson's estate are getting some wild valuations, hard to turn down offers. This past February 2023, it was reported that Michael Jackson's estate is currently in the works of selling 50% of his music catalog. This deal is between the estate and Sony with up to 900 million on the table. We are talking just for 50% here, meaning that the total value of his catalog is somewhere around 1.8 billion. That number alone shows the impact that Michael Jackson has had even after death. This deal fits right in with the common theme we are seeing with these all-time high valuations for music catalogs. The biggest question is if the Michael Jackson estate should sell at all. I really love that they are only looking to sell 50% of it. Selling 100% would be way too much. This allows them to gain that cash up front while maintaining co-ownership in the legendary catalog that will pay off long term. And that's where we are in the current state of Michael Jackson's catalog. Total value around $1.8 billion in full ownership by the estate with a possible update coming soon soon of them selling 50% for 900 million to Sony. In conclusion, there have been thousands of catalogs owned by Michael Jackson. He handpicked a few in his portfolio that he wanted to own like with the Beatles or Eminem. However, he did acquire many of catalogs just by being in the right position, co-owning Sony ATV for decades, and picking up different publishing companies looking to sell. Though his estate does not own many of these catalogs anymore, they have already received over 700 million from music that he owned that wasn't even his. Now, we may see some big deals go down that will certainly double the amount that they have earned if the estate goes through with selling a portion of Michael Jackson's catalog. If you were in possession of Michael Jackson's music catalog, what would you do? Would you retain it to earn off royalties, or would you look for a large cash payout, possibly in the billions? Let's talk about it in the comments below. Thank you for watching, have a great day.